So given surface, given surface, okay? And uh, we have to define so-called as uh, the surface element, and that is a uh, ds, okay? a, a small tiny bit uh, region, the uh, air region over the surface, and we have the so-called uh, uh, area element. That's called ds. Okay? And uh, this is surface. Okay, we denote by s. Okay? Then. Then you can uh, you can define uh, the area. Okay, compute the area. Area is going to be area. Okay, it's going to be area of the surface. This is the W integral of the surface. Yes. Okay. Now we can define this in a abstract way. Okay. And uh, if uh, if uh, if there is a vector field in the space. Okay. How can we define uh, how can we define the, the integral associated with yeah uh, an integral involving the vector field? To do that, we have to uh, define the, the the integral of the function of a surface. Okay? So let f be a function uh, on the surface, which means it has a value at every point, such like a temperature function over the sphere, over the over the Earth, right? And every point you can tell the temperature. So you, you get a function on the Earth. We call it a temperature function on the Earth. Okay. And uh, sometimes we want to know the average value of the temperature, right? Then you have to use the integral to compute it. Okay. <clears throat> so at every point you get a data almost every point, okay. Then you get the function, a temperature function, okay. So the, as a integral, uh, this is a generalized uh, double integral. The integral of the function ds, right, can be defined too, okay. This is called the surface integral of the function, okay. This is called surface integral function, right. And, uh, how to do that? We have to convert it to a double integral, the usual double integral of the of the Euclidean space. Okay. That's a, a, so this should be can be defined. Okay. Okay. Uh, another thing you can define is that if we if we let yeah this can be defined. Okay. Another thing is uh, if uh, if uh, this is a be a vector field okay over the sphere over the surface and that could be in defined it could be in the in general defined in the neighborhood okay so but at every point there is a, 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 a at every point p right there's a vector okay it's not necessarily taking the vector okay but for the surface we have a you uh, we have a we have a vector called the normal vector n. Okay, so n is a unit normal vector. Okay, if a perpendicular to to the to the table the plane. Okay, and n be a unit normal vector. Okay, over the s. Vector field actually is vector field over this because you get a uh, you get a uh, you know a vector at every point. Okay. The only two normal vector you need to normal vectors over the sphere. One is uh, on the on the top part, otherwise under that, right? Okay. Then uh, f dot n is a function. On the on the on the surface, okay. So this will be the function, okay. Then you can talk about the integral, right? Because a, a function, the integral is surface is defined. Then this is also a different, okay. Now, how do you define? Well, there's a natural way, right? Uh, if you have a 
if you have a, a this is surface S, we assume that surface S is the image of the primary translation of some D, just over that part. Okay, so this is a in three dimensional space X, Y, Z, right? And uh, this is a U and the V. Here's a domain D. So this the image is in the surface, right? So what is DS? A D as a, a surface element. A surface element can be written in. Okay, D A. Okay. So here we D A, right? So you can talk. So this is a this is kind of like a Jacobian, you know, <laughs> the, you know the, 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 the derivative of the map. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a, a yeah this is a surface uh, area element. Okay. So so now the double integral of the surface okay, f ds right is going to be can be changed to the w can be changed the double integral over the domain in the in the in the uv plane. See, S is an image of R, right? So it's going to be, everything should be changed to D. And F, right? And uh, this is, R uh, is a function for U, okay? Now, if you want to put the UV, yeah, let's put the UV there, okay? Let's get the, all the details here. So U and the V, okay? Then, and then DA, okay? D is D U D V. Okay, that's it, right? <laughs> okay, now for the for the vector field. Okay, for the vector field, uh, if you have a vector field, f dot n ds, right? There is a uh, yeah, it's you can do the similar. Okay, you can change it to the w integral, and f here, and r uv the value at that particular point and the dot for that now what is the n the normal vector n is defined is given by this following formula the cross product divided by yeah um yeah for the simplicity i probably don't want to put the uv there always okay and then ds is going to be is going to be this part. Okay. Now, now you will see that this can be canceled out, right? So this can be also simplified to F R U V and the dot product is that. And the now why is the normal vector is given by this? So let's look at it. why is the normal. This is a uh, the surface, right? Yeah, this is a surface. And the surface, here's a U curve, this is a V curve. So this is RU, right? And this is a RV. Okay, the cross product will be the vector perpendicular to those two tangent vectors. Okay, so that gives you a uh, vector perpendicular to the surface. And if you normalize it, then you get a uh, normal vector. Okay, you normalize it means you divide it by its length, so you become unit vector. Okay, so this one, uh, uh, right, is a unit vector, is a unit vector perpendicular to the surface, okay? Add to that particular point. Okay. So that's why, yeah, we have this one, okay? So now you can, you can define, uh, <coughs> you, can, you can compute the surface integral of a vector field over the surface or just a function. If it's a vector field, then you have to do the inner product. Okay, and on the surface, there is a unique normal vector almost. It's actually two, you know, it's opposite direction. 
Okay. But there's so many tangent vectors. You cannot use the tangent vectors to, to define some integral, okay, involves the vector field. Okay. Uh, compare with a, with a curve, right? For the curve. Yeah. For the curve, right? And then you have a ds, similar, right? ds, right? Then you can talk about the integral of a c f ds. If there's a vector field along that, right? Then you can talk about uh, this is vector field, right? The vector field must be the, uh, the unit part or the tangent vector. This is T is the unit the tangent vector, okay? T is the unit the tangent. See, for the curve, you can, there's a unique, there are actually two tangent vectors to the curve, depending on the orientation, okay? Depends on orientation. So, so this tangent vector, unit tangent vector, unit plot was a, was a, was a given vector field, given vector field along the curve. It's not necessary to be in the neighborhood of the curve. Okay, just around. That's all you need. Then you can this. Then you have a. Then you can parameterize it, right? Then you can parameterize the. Uh, uh, yeah, you can parameterize the case A and B, right? Then uh, this side is just from A to B and F. It's very similar. And the DS is a. Uh, right? So DS is. R prime T dt. And then similarly, you can do the computation here, F, right? And, uh, and R, R of T, and dot R prime T dt, okay? So there is a similarity here between the surface integral and the, and the, and the, and the curvy integral. I call it curvy and not line. Line usually means a straight line, okay? So, so that is very similar. <laughs> Only you know in two dimension case, the interval is not interval, it's a, it's a domain in the UV plane. Then you cannot just simply say derivative, what is derivative, right? The derivative is a, is a cross product that takes uh, uh, So I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to do the following problem. Uh, find a, yeah. uh, let's say evaluate. Yeah. Evaluate this surface integral of the function z in ds. Right. Now, here where uh, uh, s is the surface at whose sides are given by the cylinders, okay? So first of all, x squared plus y squared equals one. The bottom part is a disk. Okay? in the XY plane. And the top part is portion of the plane. Okay, so here's the idea, okay? Uh, and uh, this is a cylinder, okay? It's portion of cylinder, let me draw that. I don't want to describe it okay. using just use a picture, okay? You try to, I don't know, I need a, yeah, I need a discount. Okay, so, so this is the same, okay? The bottom part is, uh, is a disk, x, y plus, right? is less than equal to a, a disk, okay? Z equals zero, okay? The top part is determined by, by the plane, z equals one plus x, okay. Z equals one plus x, uh, it's hard to draw it. Yeah, it looks like that. 
Okay, it is a it is a it's a plane cut through that. So I'm talking about the surface. It's a closed surface. Okay, it's closed surface. Okay. Well. All right. So you have to. Uh, there's three surfaces here. The the surround one S one. That's S two, S three. Okay. So S is consists of these three surfaces. Wow, we have to do, yeah, so this surface integral is going to be the surface integral S1, yes, and S2, ZDS, S3, ZDS, okay? Let's divide into three parts. Okay, let's look at them one by one. All right, so clearly uh, S, uh, S3, which is at the uh, S2, which is at the bottom. Okay. At the bottom, these are just, you know, at every point, the value of the function is equal to the third component of Z. Okay, that means. So on S2, Z is going to be zero. So that is zero. Okay. And uh, on S3, S3 uh, uh, is the top of that. So these can be, uh, these can be just the one plus X, right? The S can be changed to that. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You just put the Z there and you know, eventually you, you, uh, you, uh, you will change it, right? So, so what I want to do is uh, uh, look at the surface integral over the Z, right? So you have to, over the S3, S3 is a, this is the S3, right? It's a plane. So what do you have to do? You have to find a, a you have to find a, 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 the, the parameterization for the plane. The parameterization for the plane, okay, let's work out this, okay? The parameterization for the plane is going to be, uh, this is a graph of the function, right? S3 is the graph of the function. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, the graph of function f x y equal to one plus x. Okay. So we already know the formula. Okay, we don't need that. Probably don't need that. So d s. Oops. Yes, sir. Something wrong with the number. Okay. So for the for the for, for the function, right? You know, uh, you don't need to repeat the whole procedure. You, you know what is a ds and the formula. It's a square root of one plus fx square and the fy square partial derivative, right? Squares. Okay. So uh, then you do the calculation quickly. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me. Yeah, you ask this. Okay. So here's a ds is going to be. 1 plus fx squared plus fy squared, right? So uh, dA. So what is uh, what is uh, fx? You know, uh, f is 1, right? So it's 1 squared. So that's your square dA. So it's going to scroll to dA. Okay. okay. So this integral, okay, this integral, this is a graph over the disk, over the disk, okay? Over the disk, x squared plus y squared less than equal one. So this changes the disk. And the z is the value of the function on the plane is just one plus x, right? And the square root two and the dA. Okay? Then you use a then you use a, a polar coordinate, x equals uh, r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, right? 
So that becomes i is between zero and one. Theta is between zero and two. It's one plus r cosine theta squared two and r d d theta dr. Okay. Yes. So we evaluate. Uh, we evaluate uh, uh, the entire as uh, the integral inside. It involves cosine theta. I think the interval cosine theta will be zero. Will be zero because it's over from zero to two pi. Okay. There's uh, so you only needed to do is just to integrate one times this number. Okay. Integrate one times this number. As the entire derivative is going to be yeah. it's going to be this number. Uh, multiply by just a second, let me check. Yeah, that, oh that's a uh, there was a two pi here. The yeah, integral of the constant. Yeah, that's two pi. So yes, two pi go two pi. Right, so that is answered, and we finish in one of them. And how about how about the side? Okay, right. so we have to we have to look at the side. I have to find the parametrization for the side. Okay, right. have to find the parametrization for the side. All right, uh, the parametrization for the for the for the side. Yeah, this is the integral of s1 v dx. Okay, so I need to find the parametrization for the side for the cylinder. Okay, for the cylinder. Okay, here's r. I think we can do this. Uh, x is going to be cosine theta. Y equals sine theta. Okay, and the z just equals z. So we can have a theta and a z. Theta is a z is a between, we don't know, right? Z is going to be one plus x. Okay. So what is our domain? Our domain for the theta, for the, yeah, for the map. Okay. It depends on the value because z is going to be uh, z, yes. So you, you you basically just open this, open that, okay? You cut through here and you open that. So it looks like that. This is our domain, okay? So uh, at every point here, theta, z is between zero and uh, for each theta, right? Z is uh, for each theta, okay? Z is a lower bound for Z is zero. The upper bound for the Z is one plus X. One plus X is cosine C. Okay, one plus cosine C. So that is our domain D, this is right. Okay, and that map, okay, the image of that map is this is zero. Okay, then you have to, okay, then you have to, this is R, right? R theta Z, okay, R theta Z is between by so X, Y, Z. So let's calculate R theta Z is going to be cosine theta, sine theta, and Z, okay? Let's calculate this map. It's going to be negative sine theta, cosine theta, and the theta. Zero, zero, one, okay? And uh, the cross product, and the cross product, what I'm going to do, I just put i, j, k on the top, okay? So the first term, I will get cosine theta, right? The second term, I will get sine theta. The third term, I get zero, right? So this is a, and it's a unit vector, actually. So the normal vector, if you want to take the normal vector, okay? So the normal vector is itself. This is a normal vector. But we don't need it here, okay? Yeah. So this is a cosine theta, sine theta, because it's a unit vector, okay? 
So what do we need is uh, is just just a norm, right? So integral the integral of the of the of this function ds is going to be the integral of the d. Okay. Z is going to be changed to one plus x, which x is cosine theta, and then the norm of this. And then the a, right? But the norm is going to be what? It's a normal vector. So you have, we have this double integral of that domain. But that domain, clearly, you have to put d theta outside, right? And so from zero to two pi, for each theta, right? And z is from zero to one plus cosine theta. Now, one, uh, one uh, from one to cosine theta. Uh, let's see, what is uh, my z? Uh, yeah, z is uh, less than equal to one plus one, one plus cosine. So, so here it is. Okay. So we'll get, so what do we get? You know, we get, uh, the so integral with respect to with respect to z, right? There's no z here involved. Mm, hold on. No, that's involved. I, I could I should have repressed about z. That's my mistake. Okay. And z is not equal to one plus z is a variable here. Okay, z is a variable here. Sorry for that. Yeah, if you if you repress if you repress by See, this is just a function changes around the surface. It's not going to be fixed. Okay. Yeah. It's different, right? Look at this. At every point, at every point here, right? And there's a value of the z is still z you, uh, uh, in the new coordinates. Okay. The value of z of the point at the point. Okay, at the point uh, uh, x, y, z, okay, right? The value uh, uh, on the surface s y, okay? The value of z is z, okay? Now in the new coordinate, okay? Uh, in the new coordinate, x equals cosine theta, y equals sine theta, then the value after using the new coordinates, the value of z is still z, okay? okay so this will be half of one plus cosine six square theta d z, okay? Your entire derivative, right? This is one uh, half of z square. So value. Then you have to expand it. Okay, it's a one plus two cosine theta and the cosine square theta. Cosine square theta is half of one plus cosine two theta. Okay, you can uh, you can simplify a little bit. It's a three over two, two cosine theta plus half of cosine two theta, d theta. Now integral of cosine theta cosine two theta over the integral from zero to two pi is going to be zero. So what do you get here is just the integral of the first term. Okay, it's going to be uh, three pi over two. All okay, right, so now the integral of the, of the uh, of this function, you have uh, two parts, right? The first part is three pi over two, and the second part, oh, okay, we did it. I forgot already. Forgot the answer. Okay, the second part is square root of two pi. Okay, so that is answer. Uh, uh, this is the integral of the function over the surface. Okay, if I if I given uh, 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 if you are given vector field, okay, over the surface, then uh, then you can also um, 
yeah. Then we have the so integral of the vector field. Suppose we're still using the same picture here, okay? So this is a cylinder, okay? So this is a cylinder. It's my favorite example, okay? And we have a step like this, plus it. Okay, so it's the same picture, okay? X square plus Y square. Uh, this cylinder is one, <clears throat> this plane is Z equals one plus X, okay? So what I want to do is, uh, yeah, here's a question. Let S be the surface. Yeah, be the cylinder, uh, 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 portion of the cylinder. On the cylinder, the cylinder is determined by this equation between the plane x and z equals zero and z equals one plus x. How about like that? Okay. So we are talking about right now as this is a portion. I don't want to do all that, right? So this is a uh, this is a cylinder. Okay. Yeah, the portion of the cylinder. And then we assume that there's a normal vector uh, is a, is a, a, a point outside. Let n be the normal vector, okay? Uh, point outside. Okay. So this is a, uh, in that. So that means, uh, the orientation is given of the surface, okay? That means uh, uh, orientation is given. Okay, once the normal vector is given, normal vector field, okay, is given, then the orientation is given, okay? Uh, orientation means which side is positive, which side is negative, as a side, when we say, right? So the inside of the cylinder, we say is the negative side of the surface. The surface has two sides. You can paint one side of yellow, other side of white. Okay, so it's two sides here. Every surface has two sides. Okay, and then orientation of the surface means which side you have to tell me the positive side. Okay. So now I given a vector field, which is in three dimension space. It's not necessarily defined on the on the on the cylinder, but you can restrict the vector field on the cylinder. Okay, so that is going to be <coughs> yeah. I I can choose an arbitrary uh, vector field. Okay, so let's use uh, the vector field x y z. Okay, so that means uh, this is a vector field and uh, and. Uh, uh, the direction vector field is uh, is a uh, point outside to the see here's a here's a uh, the vector field how does it look like it's harder to draw okay uh, it's going outside you know yeah okay. it's uh, they're all perpendicular to the sphere at every point okay so this is a vector field. We want to evaluate the surface integral of f and dot n ds. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, we have a number of parameterization, right? For the for the cylinder. For the cylinder, we have the parameterization theta z, which is cosine z, sine z, and Z, right? Uh, yeah, let's repeat it again. How do you find this a number of vector, right? So this theta z is going to be negative sine z, cosine z, and uh, cosine z, negative sine z, cosine theta z, and z. Right? The cross product, uh, the cross product okay, is going to be 
you know, put the IGK here. If we, we forgot this, then it's going to be cosine theta. I remember sine theta and the zero, okay? So this is a, uh, and if you look at the picture, this is a, it's obvious. Okay, let's just, let's look at the picture, the cylinder, along the cylinder, right? And uh, how do you find the normal vector at that particular point? So the normal vector must be horizontal. So the third component must be zero, okay? And if this is a, if this is a point, you know, yeah, then uh, the normal vector at that particular point actually is a, is a, is parallel translated from this normal vector from the vertical axis to that point, okay? So if we do the competition, you, sometimes you can write as a normal vector to it. All right. So now our surface integral S, F, D, N dot, right, DS, is going to be, is going to be this, right? And uh, F is X, Y, Z. So X, uh, X becomes cosine theta. Y becomes sine theta, Z is this, okay? And the number of that, is cosine theta, sine theta, zero, okay? Then dA, dA is a, dA is a, you know, the, the domain, remember the domain is a theta z, right? And it's de described by the following formula, z is a, is a greater than zero, less than one plus cosine theta. And theta is between zero and two pi, right? Yeah, this is, a, uh, this is our uh, domain. Yeah, we already we already uh, we already did right here's two pi, this is theta, that's a z. This is our domain D. Okay, when you close up you get to that surface. So. Okay, uh, the inner product uh, turns out to be just is one. Okay, so <laughs> So that's a DA. That just needed that's equivalent to the so the area of this domain. That's so integral from zero to two pi, and from zero to for each theta, it's one plus cosine theta, and the one dz and the dc. Okay. That's so going to be integral one plus cosine theta, and the dc, and that is just equal to pi. Because the integral of cosine theta over the period, complete period from zero to two pi, is always going to be zero, right? In general, cosine kx from zero to two pi is zero. K is the integral, right? And similarly, uh, similarly, uh, you don't need to find the antiderivative. You just use that fact. The reason is, is the negative part of the positive part cancel out. And the same is true for, for, for x and for sine. It's also zero, okay? Because the negative part of the positive part cancel out. All right, so that's about the surface. Uh, it's about surface integral. Now, uh, if you change the, yeah, let's look at the formula for, for, the, for, the, for the graph. Okay, so the graph, yeah, consider the surface. This is a graph of z equals fxy. Okay, the domain uh, x, y is in the domain d. Okay, so here's a picture. And this is the domain d, here's a graph. Okay. So we already have the formula for the surface area, okay? Yeah, this is my S, right? That's a D. Okay. Now you can have a function defined on the, on, the, on, the, on the graph, right? So here's the point. What is the average, what is the average height, right? What is the average height? How do you solve this problem? What is the average height of this uh, graph? 
eso. Right? So you have to find a way to 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 uh, to find the value, right? So they have to find the height function. The height function at every point x, y, z, that is x, y, z, right? Is going to be, let's say h, okay? Uh, um, yeah, the, fun, the, the, the height function at every point x, y, z, is going to be the z value, right? Right? Yeah, the height, z tells you the height. So that's it. And uh, and um, so there is also the average, the average uh, uh, height is going to be, yeah, it's going to be the, uh, the integral of the height function ds, right? divided by the integral of the, of the surface, yeah, right? So that, all I have to do is just um, to get the formula, then you, you solve the problem, okay. I think it's easy now, right? We know ds, right? ds is, in, uh, is going to be one plus fx squared plus fy squared here, okay? We know that, okay? Okay. At the point, this can be also repressed by z is going to be f of x1. Okay, so this is going to be the double integral here. And the top part, just to repress a h, right? So h at the point x, y, and the third point is x, y, right? So it's just equal to f of x, y. Okay, so that gives you the formula of the average height. Right, that gives the formula of the average height. Right. Yeah, let's take a look at, uh, yeah, look at, uh, uh, look at uh, uh, the foreign problem, okay? Z equals X squared plus Y squared, okay? And the, it's over, the graph is over the foreign disk, X squared plus Y squared less than equal to one. Okay, so you have the, this paraboid, okay? I, I think, yeah, we already, yeah, this is our F, okay? So F of X is 2X, F of Y is 2Y. Right. All right, so, uh, so DS is gonna be one plus F of X squared, f of y squared dx, right? Okay. All right. So uh, let's find out, evaluate, you know, we already did this, right? The area, the surface area. The surface area is going to be The surface area is going to be what? Okay. So it's going to be D, right? And you repress by this. And the DA, right? DA. So this is a double integral of the, of the disk, of the disk. of the disk.
Right, over the disk, then how do you evaluate the system integral? Well, use the polar coordinates. Right, if you use the polar coordinates, it's from zero to two pi, from zero to one. And here is one plus four x squared plus y squared r squared, and have another r here, d r is zero. Right, you, we can uh, evaluate this. We did this before, let's repeat it. Okay, so the surface area, okay, All right, so then uh, we can take a two pi out already, okay, so it's no, there's no, it's in, the function is independent theta, okay, so use the substitution, let u to be one plus four r square, so b equals a r dr, and, and when, when u equals, when i equals zero, u equals one, when i equals two, one, it's again five, okay. So u, we will have one over eight du. So let's find out the entire derivative. And the entire derivative is gonna be two over three, u to the three over two, evaluate at the two and the points, okay. Right, so it's going to be let's simplify a little bit it's pi over six and uh, and the five to the three over three minus one. Okay, so that is a, a surface area. We can take it, no problem. How about uh, the height function? The height function, right, is just equal to z at every point. So the uh, the height, the w integral h ds. Okay. okay, if we change it to the double integral of a d, h is going to be z, right? So what is z? z is our function, x squared plus y squared. So that is z part. And then the surface is uh, ds, right? D -A. Okay, so this is our integral. Now, I'm not sure we are able to evaluate this, but I think so. We can do that. Okay. So use a polar uh, coordinate again. It's from zero to two pi, from zero to one. X squared plus Y squared is R squared. One plus four R squared. You have another R here, E R D C. okay? Uh, you can interchange this two in double integrals, right? Uh, this two integrals, so it doesn't matter. Then you, get, you can take a two pi out. Okay. Now, are we able to evaluate this integral? The answer is yes. Okay, we use a, still use the same substitution. It's a one plus four r squared. So d equals eight r dr. And what is r squared? r squared is going to be u minus one over four, right? Okay. All right, so when i equals zero, use one. When i equals one, u equals five. All right, this is u to the one half. Now you have r square, here's r square times r. So r square is going to be u minus one divided by four. And r dr is going to be one over eight du, okay? So, well, so let's take a look at I think it's pi over 16. Okay. And then I multiply this out. It's u over 3 over 2 minus u to the 1 half of u. All right. And let's try, let's try. Yeah, let's find the antiderivative of this function. That's two. That was a that is going to be two over five, u to the five over two, minus two over three, u to the three over two. Okay. It's pretty complicated, but you can evaluate. Okay. I put this, and the minus one, 
So I think that's too long. You know what's good. Okay. I think we can still simplify it a little bit. And, uh, you know, five of, of this five, it's going to be, you can five to the three over two, right? Okay. So this will be uh, just two minus three over two. Okay, so the answer is four over three, five over three over two, and uh, what is the other one? The other one is uh, 15, yeah, two over three minus two over five, 10 minus uh, six, it's going to be plus four over 15. All right, <laughs> so this is a uh, this is a is a value, okay? Now the average height of that preboid is going to be the integral, right? The double integral of h d s. Okay, so the pi of a sixteen. Right. Uh, what is the denominator? <laughs> wait, wait, I forgot the denominator. Okay, pi over six. Right. Now, this number looks pretty strange, but I guarantee it's between zero and one. So this positive is clear, it should be less than one. Right. It should be less than one. Otherwise, my computation is wrong. Right. So uh, how do you check this is less than one? How do we check this is less than one? Well, first of all, pi is canceled out, right? And let's take a look at this, okay? That will be uh, three over eight, right? <coughs> six over 16, two times three, two times eight, yeah, right? So that will be four over three, and then you say, I still cannot see it's smaller than one. Uh, yeah, you cannot see that this moment. <laughs> yeah, if you want to, it's a, whether it's a less than one, you just assume it's a less than one, then you simplify it. That's important. Okay, so you can simplify here a little bit. Four of uh, five, right? And here's eight. Is it less than one or not? Okay, if it's less than one or not. I think a four, four can cancel out. So it's two, okay? So the answer will be here is a five of uh, uh, three over two plus one over five. And here's five of three over two minus one to divide by two, okay? I'm pretty sure it's less than one, okay? So let's check, okay? We have put the question mark here. Then have a five of three over two plus one over five less than two times five of three over two minus two. Okay. Then you move uh, one term to the other side. It's two plus one over five less than uh, less than five three over two. Okay. Well, can we see that? And I think uh, this is uh, not clear still. Okay. Okay, so then you can say 11 over five less than five as well too. Then you square both sides, 11 square, five square less than five cube, right? Okay, right? Then you see 11 square less than equal to five to the first. I think that is obvious now, okay? This is obvious, okay? Okay, so indeed that this is less than, this is about being called the whole. Okay, the height is less than one. Okay, so the every height is the reason is, uh, you know, this is a, uh, uh, right? The, the highest one is one, the lowest one is zero. So average is somewhere here. And okay? this is the average value. Average value is the height, okay? All right, so, uh, 
that is uh, today's lesson. We only did uh, three examples. I did not uh, do the um, uh, evaluate the uh, uh, yeah, I did as a the vector field, integral vector field of the surface. So the question is why we do we do not just find the divide the height by the area because we don't know the height. Okay, when we are talking about the average value of a function over some region or domain, we always evaluate the integral of that function over that region divided by the area or the volume of that region. Okay, so of the function is just a function. So the height is a function. It has a different variables, a different values over the sphere. You can divide it by the area. Then you still get a, 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 a function, not a number. When we talk about average value, it's just a number. Okay, okay. Like what is a, for example, like over the last last week is a stock price of a particular stock, you know, goes up and down, right? And uh, the time interval is one week. You cannot just say divide by one week. That gives you the average price of the stock because the stock price is still is a function of the time t, right? So you have to integrate the stock price over the time and then divide by the time interval. That gives you the average value of the, of the stock price over that over that week. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's stop here, and we are going to take the test. I take the quiz. <laughs>